Hello and a warm welcome to everyone to today's deep event and the third deep talk with uh, our guest today, Lisa, and the topic of sexual pleasure and taboos. Before I hand it over to you, Lisa, to introduce yourself, um, I would just like to briefly introduce myself and Deep. I am Wiebke and I am one of the co-founders of Deep Germany. For all of you who don't know and haven't heard yet of Deep Germany, uh, Deep stands for Dialogue, Empathic Engagement and Peace Building. And Deep is a not-for-profit organization with a focus on peace education, and DEEP is also part of the Global DEEP Network. So there's several, many DEEP circles um, all around the globe. Um, and one of our projects and also our newest project is this um, DEEP Events Online Project. And we want to create a space uh, where we can learn from each other, where we can grow personally, and where we can share ideas and discuss topics. And we usually have a guest like Lisa today that we invite and there's different possible formats. And so any ideas and requests are welcome. Just contact us if you have yeah, any topic that you would like to see or hear here. And also part of this deep events uh, is deep yoga, which Lini uh, offers. This Wednesday starts a new deep, online co uh, deep yoga online course. So if you're interest interested, just follow us on social media or look at our website and sign up, it's not too late. Um, yeah, now, so our guests, so I met Lisa um, through some friends here in Cologne in 2018, where I was lucky to attend several beautiful singing nights, singing circles um, that you, Lisa, held. And because I enjoyed these so much, I actually also had some private sessions with you where we didn't just sing, but also explored, um, yeah, my relationship to voice, which is which was more a little bit more therape therapeutical. And yeah, with this said, I would like to hand it to you and um, yeah, for you to introduce yourself. I'm really excited and happy um, for this topic and for you to be here today. And um, yeah, let's let's get started. All right. So the first thing I would like you to do is to please go to view on the upper right side and switch to gallery view so you can see all the screens. And then please, if you feel okay with it, please switch on your camera. There's a lot of switched off cameras. I'd love to see some of the faces who is here. And I invite you to also take a look at all these different faces that are here for today. Maybe some of you don't want to be seen. That's okay. You don't have to switch on your camera, but I'd love it. So now you can, I even have two pages of screens here. So you can switch between the pages and just have a look at the different faces. Check out who's here. Okay. And then for the rest of now, there will be a few little exercises, but most of the stuff that we'll do is talk. So you can get comfortable, relax, I don't know, get your tea, whatever. Uh, don't feel obliged to always uh, appear listening or whatever. I, I don't mind. I mean, it's you who loses something if you're, if you're not attentive. So um, yeah, if you want, you can get some more comfortable blanket or something or some drink maybe you want to put a notebook or a, or a paper and pen next to you there might be some things that are interesting or just a little note that you want to take so it's nice to have it like right next to your hand it might be a good idea to switch off your phone so that you're really like a bit here with us even if it's just your computer or whatever but to really take the time to be here um, and yeah Great that you're here. Uh, so um, usually I do body exercises. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to at least have a, a small little stretch, maybe just some yawning or whatever you can need. I don't know how much you have had of computer today already. Maybe you've had some listening and talking. You can rub your face or your hands or do whatever feels nice to just be a bit more open again to input that will come. 
And I'd also love you to unmute yourself all at the same time and just say hi or something like, ooh, or just one little sound so that we can hear each other. Yeah. Hey, hello. 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 See everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. Meow. <laughs> okay, cool. It's actually people there. <laughs> mm, good. Mm, okay, so this, this thing takes um, an interesting direction. It's called sexual pleasure and taboos, whatever this is going to mean. And um, yeah, how, how can I start? Uh, I would say a breaking with certain taboos is probably one of my main missions in my life like really breaking, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm known to ask very direct questions or to do things that people think is like, mm, can you actually do that? But in the same time, it's not very extreme. Yeah, I was spotlighted now. If you want, you can keep, you, you can keep it like that, but you can also switch back to gallery view if you like it to see some of the people and to have kind of a feeling of seeing the group or something, so. Um, Uh, 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 um. I wanted to ask you if you know anyone here, maybe you don't uh, tell others that you saw them here, even if it's just a listening thing it might be nice to just yeah to just keep it a bit private who was here. Um, and then um, uh, I also want to invite you to take um, to, to start a list during this talk of things that you consider a taboo for yourself, of, of something that you think is like maybe something that is uh, that you're not supposed to do or, or that uh, that might be might be intriguing. Maybe that was something that that's like, oh, I could follow that maybe that there's something interesting in this for me. So uh, I invite you to, to start this list and you can continue it in your life if you want <laughs> a list of things that are taboos for you with the question if you want to keep it taboo or if you want to open it and find some kind of freedom in it. Um, because I consider uh, some taboos as very necessary and, and logical and, and helpful for things uh, um, and good and some other taboos for like not very helpful. And I'd like to research with you around this and I don't, I don't believe there's a general truth on this, but a uh, very individual one. So, um, I'd like to ask you a question uh, and I'd like you to um, drop words into the chat. There's the chat box so you can open it and you can just drop single words or sentences. And my question is, uh, what uh, would you like to change in yourself or in the world around sexual pleasure and taboos? What's this, what are things that come up that you would like to change or that you would like to research on? What intrigues you around sexual pleasure and taboos? Um, maybe you can post anything that comes up and we'll see the different answers and we, we won't refer to single people. This is just to get an idea. Cultural differences and nuances around sex, yes. Sexual fantasies. Shame. Polyamoric relation, polyamorphic relationships. I don't know what that is. More sexual adventures, <laughs> masturbation. Hmm. 
more holistic view of what sex includes, not only orgasm, tantric sex, men's vulnerability. Okay, great. There's a lot of things. But uh, that are coming up. It's it's a bit general, no? Uh, maybe maybe the question was also very general. Anything that you can feel or think around this topic. <laughs> so we have very many different directions coming. Fully free, fully feel free without having distracting thoughts in my mind. Okay. Um, talking while having sex. Yes. So I believe, uh, or let's say for myself, uh, I found it helpful to, to find ways to break limiting taboos. So I had quite some taboos, I probably still have some, but luckily it's already less, uh, that were limiting to me, that, that limited me in joy. And my aim of this talk is to give you some ideas of things that can be helpful uh, to unlimit uh, your pleasure, um, access and to to unlimit things that that you actually feel limited in that you that you want want to have somehow in your life um to feel more pleasure and uh i think that a lot of it is about self-allowance like how can i allow myself uh something that i believe is wrong because the word taboo says it's forbidden taboo means forbidden so anything that is forbidden for me or for for the world i come from is a struggle to to feel or to live so my, my, my interest would be how can we inspire us, ourselves and other people to, uh, to live uh, through limits and, and to open up limits that, that, uh, that block us from, from living pleasure. So things that I, for example, uh, had struggled with was um, talk, yeah, it, it, it was already said in, in the answers now, talking about sex in general and, and also talking during sex, which are two very different things. Uh, so when I was working on this and, and started to get more used to really talking also during the sex or sexual experiences that I had, it helped me to make them much nicer than before. But it was something that I really needed to, to uh, learn because uh, I thought it was wrong. And I thought I would like kind of destroy the magic. Now in my classes now, I'm asking what magic are you destroying if actually you're not enjoying what's happening? So like, okay, actually it's hurting or it's too dry and he's not really hitting the spot anyway. I don't want to destroy the magic of bad sex or what? I don't, I don't know, like, I don't get it. So uh, I decided that I don't want to, uh, I don't, I don't want to stay um, in a numb place that actually blocks us. It's interesting, uh, naming things usually is the shortest, but the least used way to, to, to show what we like. So if, if I just say, I like this, it's, it's usually the shortest way, but it's usually the way that we, that we avoid most, maybe because it's, uh, so explicit that it's hard to receive the rejection on it. If I just like move away a little bit and it's like like subtle showing I don't like this, uh, then it's like if if the person doesn't really read it, then it's still okay. I'm not so de detectable. But if I openly say I don't like it, I can I'm I can be confrontable. So yeah, for some people it's uh, there's good there are good reasons why they don't uh, name the things directly. But I found it helpful to learn that. Um, there is also other taboos that uh, I even didn't know I want to work on. For example, um, uh, anal licking. Uh, for all my life, I never had this idea that I like this and I never thought I would need to work on it. But when I had a lover that really um, encouraged this and we learned together how to do it in a way that I like it and I came over, over the taboo of thinking this is something dirty and something I shouldn't do. Um, rather uh, like now I'm rather in a place of okay I need this condition I need to be clean I need to feel nicely washed and then I'm then I can maybe enjoy this uh, it opened a whole new world of, of physical pleasure that I didn't even know was uh, existing and um, it's something that I didn't learn anywhere like no one ever told me hey try this <laughs> or I don't know there's something nice to discover it was just like why would anyone ever do that <laughs> And uh, I had this with several taboos. So um, I find that there's a lot of um, possibilities to free ourselves. Also nakedness, uh, nudity. If, if, I, uh, if I would have stayed with the taboos that I um, had in myself in the beginning of my life or in the beginning of my adult life, um, 
then I would really just enjoy it so much less to be uh, sensual or sexual with people. I could I couldn't really uh, be easy in the sauna. I couldn't be uh, uh, I couldn't have sex in daytime because the daylight would show my body. Because I'm not if I'm not easy with my body, I can't show my body. So I needed to be in the dark and with the curtains closed and under the blanket. And so uh, any situation where I don't have darkness means I can't have sexual experiences. Uh, there so so that's limiting uh, to my uh, pleasure freedom it was to mine maybe for you it's different and this is something that that i really want to uh, um, point out that really you don't you don't need to feel the way i feel or something yeah so please don't think that you need to want to lick asses or anything <laughs> um yeah also noise noise is also something that is really very uh, very uh, tabooed around <laughs> so making sensual sexual noises uh, is not uh, so free for most people even if you're already reached a point of okay I'll just try to not care uh, still it's somehow weird most for most people if if you know that someone can hear it and I think it's uh, for me it was very very freeing to work on that and to really just try to still uh, open my my voice open my mouth make the sounds that come out because um, there's a very direct connection between the voice and the genitals and if people stop themselves from making uh, sounds that are sexual they also stop themselves from feeling certain access of pleasure so so you can't you can't access all your pleasure potential without any any sound made, uh, I would say. Um, so I really recommend that also for, for anyone to, to, to find places and situations that allow you to make sexual noises. It will just, uh, it will just increase uh, certain pleasure levels, let's say, or, or open, open some doors. <laughs> And uh, also it can be small steps. You don't have to go like, okay, usually I would like never make a sound and now I need to train moaning or whatever. So I'll, in the next sex I have, I'll go like, oh, oh fuck, this feels wrong, but whatever. She said, I need to train on my voice. So uh, you can also just breathe a little bit louder and it will already open up something else. Or or you can make very small sounds and work like in small steps on these taboos that you, that you um, programmed in yourself and in your throat or in your body so uh, it can be helpful to to um, yeah I have to say to to um, thank yourself for small steps that you take and not not expect yourself to like switch into some kind of freedom just because you saw someone else being so super free and anything um, yeah mm. Uh, what I also want to say is that uh, I like clearing out for myself what taboo I think is uh, helpful to me and is something that I don't want to change and what taboo is not helpful. Uh, so it's a kind of clearing. The word clearing in English usually is used to kind of cleaning, <laughs> but it's also, it also contains the word clear. So something is clearer. It's, it's a bit interesting. Oh yeah, pain, for example. For a long time, I thought like uh, liking to be hit is something that I shouldn't like. And I didn't understand why anyone would like it. And uh, now that I uh, had some contact with conscious BDSM and with ways to, to try it out in a very loving and soft and slow way, uh, I know now that I can really enjoy uh, being hit. Uh, if it's in a nice way. And uh, the funny thing is that most people uh, have no problem at all with strong massages, like where you grab, or maybe you even like hit the back like this. But as, as soon as this, there comes the sexual touch in, a lot of people react like, oh my God, why would anyone ever do this? So there's a lot of um, cultural shame around, around uh, strong touch in sexual backgrounds which I think uh, can be a, a wonderful, very enriching part of, of sexual interaction if it's uh, done in a consensual and very nice way. So this is, for example, a taboo that I think is worth uh, looking at. Well, that was worth looking at for me, at least. <sighs> a lot of talking. Mm. I would like some uh, exchange with you. Um, I found that there, 
that can be kind of uh, cultural taboos and that can be a bit kind of personal taboos and they can of course uh, be the same or they can they can be um, so they can be kind of a range or, or it can be mixed but there is stuff that kind of anyone uh, knows it's forbidden like people don't have sex in the bus or something or in the train uh, in the middle of everyone else <laughs> um, and it's kind of a cultural taboo everyone knows this is something that is not allowed we kind of agreed everyone agrees okay this is wrong mm. And then there is personal taboos that are not officially wrong for everyone, but it's more like I found I, I created a belief in me that this is wrong. Um, for example, no one ever told me that uh, I can't be naked or that being naked is something that I should be ashamed of. But uh, I feel this in me or, or um, telling my partner that how I, I'm touched right now, I don't like this. Uh, is, is for many people is a taboo. You can't say, I don't like how you touch me right now because uh, for some reason it's, it's considered wrong to do this. But if I, if I, uh, I, I wouldn't say like, you, you don't learn in the street, don't tell anyone that it's this, yeah, you, like it's not a cultural belief that you can't say, I don't like this, but it's, it can be a very strong personal belief that can like block your sexual pleasure for many years. So um, so I would like to collect a few uh, cultural taboos with you. So whatever you think is a cultural taboo, please, you can type it into the chat and just we, we'll see a few, whatever your ideas are, pleasure potential. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you think are cultural taboos, things that are culturally not allowed in our culture? Oral sex, okay, yes. Anal sex. Discussing erectile dysfunction, yeah. This is very true, by the way. Most guys think that they're the only one that have sometimes a soft dick. And every guy has sometimes a soft dick in sex. So it's uh, it's so strange that people don't talk about it. <laughs> Females being assertive and initiating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pre-marriage sex. <laughs> yeah. Can be also varying to the religion or to the country. But, uh, but in general, it's also a little bit of a taboo, yes. Also marriage sex, <laughs> sex in general. Group sex, yes. Last, if you have disabilities, very good one. Yeah, anything that's around sex connected to disabled people, usually a taboo. You kind of consider people that are disabled, they don't have sexual feelings, <laughs> they're, they're not sexual. Old people sex, yes. Mm -hmm. LGBT sex. <laughs> Talking about sex. Mm -hmm. High sex drive, partners not reciprocating. Sorry, I'm not so good in English. I don't know what that word means. Talking about going into sex clubs. Yes. Yeah, a few more that I have uh, found when thinking was um, uh, strange wishes. For example, looking into someone physically, like wanting to look very deep inside into your body it can be a weird thing. No one talks about this. High sex drive and not being reciprocate and sex in public. Yes. Liking to have a finger in the butt is a sexual taboo, I think. Probably cultural taboo. <laughs> Anything around the anus is probably pretty much a cultural taboo. Interest in liquids like peeing. Um, yeah, probably only peeing. I don't know any other liquids that are. Oh yeah, periods, anything around period sex. Seeing period blood is also. Thinking of someone else during sex, yes. It's a taboo. <laughs> Body hair, great, uh-huh. Then vi violence fantasies also. Uh -huh. Sex for pleasure, not only for getting, getting pregnant. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I also believe there is a very strong taboo around uh, uh, things that we consider um, political or morally incorrect. So if I like something, for example, dirty music or, or sexual fantasy that I, that I don't think is like politically correct, I'll have a bit of difficulties uh, to allow it. Yeah, any, any diseases, any illnesses, sexual illnesses. Also, there is a big taboo around being intimate with other people, not, not sexually necessarily, but intimacy in general, to be intimate with myself, with others, to, to have a long look into, uh, I don't know, if, if, if I go to the bakery and I get a bread and I look into the seller's eyes and I get, I create an intimacy because it's a two second look and not only one second, it's already like ooh, taboo kind of. Mm -hmm. Same sex intimacy, yeah, for sure. Um, great, thank you for this. Um, I would like to ask you, um, do you have any questions or comments on this? You can also, uh, you're also welcome to share. I mean, it's a big group and it feels maybe a bit weird, but please, if, you, if you're if you courageous, if you have any thought or question, uh, unmute yourself, you can always uh, ask. You'll be, a, you'll be a recorded, but we can cut it out. If you don't want to be in the recording, we can uh, edit this and, and you won't be uh, sent on to the others that are not here, but get the recording. So any questions or comments around cultural taboos? What do you think are taboos that you find turning off? Like that you don't find nice or like uh, like a sexual taboos that you think are like really uh, <laughs> something that is taboo and you don't like it sexually. Liquids, ah, uh -huh. sodomy. Sodomy means fucking animals, right? I know. Uh huh. Defecating. What does that word mean? Defecating. Shitting. Ah, yeah. So it's a taboo to shit and bad, and you also don't see any reason to, to change that. Yes, okay. And if you want, you can also take a note for yourself. But yeah, I don't know if, if you want to collect notes on what, what you don't want to work on. <laughs> yeah, don't do it too. Okay. Non-menstrual blood. Okay, great. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Penetration. Uh-huh. Strong pain in BDSM style sex. Mm -hmm. So this is taboos that turn you off. Anything public, okay. Mm -hmm. This one can be different for, I mean, many of them can be different for different people. So not, not all of them are probably to all of you turning off, but it's interesting to see. You don't know the name, but when someone acts like a child wearing diapers. <laughs> so role play where one, <laughs> where one of the partners is playing a baby. Uh -huh. My, my second question around this, as you can probably guess, is um, please share your ideas of taboos that turn you on or that turn someone on. Yes, yes, it's good, good comment. No, you have, you have a hard time making a difference between personal and cultural taboos. Yeah, they are, they are of course, connected. We will get to this difference uh, later on. Okay, role play scenarios. You can also, you're welcome to be more specific what roles you, you like to play or that what taboos are, you can you can put into role play, that might be nice. Yeah, rag fantasies, pain, animal roles. So I'm, I'm a little hamster with you. <laughs> Verbally sharing kinky fantasies during sex, yes. Mm -hmm. Challenge gender roles. Drawing out the central process for an extended time, staying on the edge, but not going over. Is this a taboo? <laughs> Bondage, yes. <laughs> Taboos that turn you on. <laughs> not only things that turn you on. <laughs> pegging, what is pegging? Moaning really freely and loud, yes. Mm -hmm. 
the risk of being watched. Uh -huh. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> Having sex in nature. Feedback and connection during sex. Any thoughts or questions or sharings on this? Anyone want to say something? Tightness or taboos by discussing or sharing with someone, we give them freedom to meet us in the same place of openness about themselves. Yeah. Okay, I'll have a look at the time. Okay, great. We still have a lot of time. Um, I would like to do a small uh, mini exercise with you that does not involve writing or communicating with anyone here. Um, it's a small uh, thing where you can just. Um, feel a physical sensation so i would like to ask you to stand up and you don't need to see me you can just hear me and we also don't need to necessarily see you so you just stand up maybe shake a bit stretch a bit a lot of talking and thinking <sighs> give it a breath mm. Mm. and then I would like you to take a step to the left, but don't do it yet. So or maybe, maybe you can turn to your left side, kind of like turn to this direction and imagine that now if you do a step to the front, here is a place where, where you are in a taboo. It's not said what kind of taboo, it's a bit abstract, but if you do one step now, you'll be in the taboo. So you can do a step now and see how it feels to enter a place that is taboo. And when you do it, I'd like you to feel how is it here? Maybe you can try some small movements. What suits this idea? How do you feel here? Maybe you uh, put your arms around you or something. You, you can see how do you move your shoulders in a place that is forbidden, taboo? What do your hands do here? A bit, a bit kind of a research on your movements. You can see how, how do your hips feel? How do your feet feel in this taboo area? Hmm, but weird, do you feel some, is anything you recognize? Is there any, anything you know you've already felt or is it, is it just a strange exercise? I don't know what happens here. Is there anything like shame or, or tension? And if you make it a bit more extreme now, how could you make it even more if you were like acting this on stage? How do you show that you are taboo right now, that you're in the taboo? Is it like hiding more or holding yourself more or hide, hiding away or hmm, you don't really know, you feel strange? And then you can step back into the neutral position, shake a bit, shake out your body a little bit. Loosen up your shoulders, your jaw. And we do a second, the second experiment to the other side, to your right side. You can turn there, and this will be an area where, where there is freedom, where there is no taboo. Just something where, where everything is allowed. And we'll see what happens if you go there. So you can take the step now and see how it feels to step into an area of no taboo. How would you like to stand here? What changes if you're like, okay, here, everything is allowed. Actually, there's nothing forbidden. Hmm. Does it make you feel open or, or weird? How do your shoulders change your movements? What do your hands do, your arms? How do your hips move? Is there anything that you recognize here that you felt before? Maybe it's too abstract. Maybe you can discover some kind of sensations or a picture for yourself and you can try to make it even more extreme like even more like oh if you would really like try to find an um, expression for for this place how would it look thank you and you can step back into the neutral position and and you can just relax we're we're done with this little exercise and if you had any thoughts coming up that you want to write down or any anything that you'd like to remember for later you can write it down 
you can also share in the chat or you can also unmute yourself and share to the group anything you you just thought or you just felt You're feeling so confident in the non-taboo space. Your shoulders went right back and your hips just wanted to move on their own in a dance. Nice. Mm -hmm. Some excitement in the taboo space. Mm -hmm. Nice euph euphoric openness, comfortableness because of a mutual connection, feeling of being on the same page. Mm -hmm. In the taboo, taboo zone, I felt very connected to my inner child. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Tightness in the ass and my pelvic floor in the taboo zone, yes. It's interesting, there's, a, there's different concepts around uh, our emotions in the body and many of them consider that shame sits in the ass a lot. So whenever we feel shame and something that shouldn't be, we, we squeeze our anus. <laughs> So the more we have a lot of feelings that things shouldn't be like they are in us, the more we squeeze our anus. <laughs> so it can also be helpful to just unsqueeze the anus and practice relaxing the anal muscles to feel a bit more free and easy. I would like to continue a little bit more about uh, the personal sexual potential. Mm. So I skipped this question or I kind of made this mistake kind of uh, that I that I mixed up the questions uh, and I want to continue on personal taboos, but we're not going to do it in a chat share. Um, I'm also a bit uh, tired of this writing and reading thing, but it's also difficult to just share your personal taboos uh, in a short way to even know them just like this. I'd like to say a few things on this. So one thing is that I find it important to know that my turn-ons are not necessarily my opinions. So things that make me hot don't have to be things that I consider are good or right. And some of these things may be uh, helpful to find ways to have them in my life and some not. I'll give you an example. For example, a lot of people especially a lot of women um, have rape fantasies. Probably I read some statistics. I don't know if they're right, but probably about 40% of all women, maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. Uh, and uh, a lot of people don't allow these fantasies or think they are like strange or ill or whatever uh, and, and consider it wrong because they've never uh, talked about it and they haven't heard other people talk about it and it's considered weird because who would ever want to be raped? And also because you think if, if I like something, I want it and it's not necessarily the same thing. If I like uh, something, it doesn't mean I, I want to experience this. If I enjoy seeing, uh, seeing something, I don't have to, be, have to want to be the person experiencing this thing that I see. So if I like to watch people jump into ice cold water on YouTube, I don't necessarily have to want to be this person. Um, but maybe I still like to see it or, or to imagine it. And uh, having fantasies does not mean I want to experience this fantasy. There's sometimes people teaching around uh, sexual freedom and you can have workshop leaders that will go like, if you, if you start, uh, I've, I've heard a talk that said like, if you start talking, um, if, you, if you free your talk and you talk more openly, you can finally come to live your fantasies with your partner. Uh, not all fantasies are necessarily fantasies that you want to actually come true. So I don't want to be raped, but I love this fantasy. I love to imagine that I'm raped. And my fact, in my case, it's true. And maybe it's for you, maybe not. And it may be super strange, especially for people who have who have been raped or who have contact uh, to people that have been raped or, or like who never had any sexual uh, fantasy around this, it can be very strange and disturbing, but I don't consider it wrong. I think that that behind it is not, is not really a desire for, for this experience of rape, but uh, behind it is a desire uh, for allowing what is forbidden. So the taboo itself creates the, the interest a little bit. And I also think that in this case, I'll just say it because I had a lot of thoughts and, and stuff around uh, this topic of rape. Um, 
for for uh, for many people i think there's a big wish of of surrender of being like really out of control but we can't allow it because we we need this safety to be in control and in in this fantasy of being raped i have a power that is stronger than me that takes me and this this idea of someone just taking me and i can't help it creates a it creates a situation of surrender in me so i have to surrender because the other one is stronger and this is what i love so it doesn't have to be something that goes against my will it's just something that is very strong so what i took from it is that now i can have uh, for example uh, share my desires to my partner about uh, having an intense encounter that goes with strong pushes or that goes like you you take my body or there, there can be any kind of physical interaction that can be strong so i have this experience of a strong encounter and not necessarily anything that goes against my will so there can be different reasons why this is there but uh, my message is mostly that don't don't uh, worry that it's there it's okay and and it can be it can be very enriching for your sexual player to start to uh, find ways to find out what is the thing about it that i like do i just want to think of it do i just want to uh, do i want to experience as i now described some situations that are like a little bit similar or or do i not want to follow this it can also be like okay i have i have thoughts that are disgusting to myself maybe i don't know i have thoughts of murdering people i have thoughts of whatever of rape of of strange things of animals of weird sexual situations that i don't find in any way nice but they turn me on and it's strange and I don't like it. So this can happen and uh, I don't think it's anything bad. And I invite you to, to research around and, and find where, find out like what, what is there in it for you? What, what is there in it for you to discover or uh, where do you want to talk about it? With whom is there any situation that can like, um, make you feel less like a monster around it maybe or, or like a strange weirdo because uh, the funny thing is that I mean most people have very weird thoughts and don't share them <laughs> so it's like it's not that uh, like in your head there is this thing about weird rape whatever weirdo fantasy uh someone sticking their dick into a, a cupboard and you, you think it's somehow hot but somehow super strange and and everyone else has just like flowers and school in their head like no like people are strange and weird so so there's uh there's a lot more uh, in us to share and and a lot a lot of times people don't dare to do it um also, what I very much like is uh, is to find ways uh, in a consent um, background uh, to to put in the things. Like what I want to say is, for example, if two partners both are uh, like to play around with role play and to imagine they are someone else than they actually are. Uh, or maybe not even someone else, but just a different quality that, than they usually are. Like I can take the role of being a bit angry at you, even though I'm not. Or I can play the role of being so soft and without any wish, I'm just passive, even though I'm a very strong person or whatever. Like it can, there can be any quality that can be a role play. And, and if we start exploring around this, there can be, anything can be possible. Like if two, if, if two or more uh, adult people consent, I think that a lot of a lot is possible. There's a very nice documentary uh, called uh, Venus. I think just Venus, uh, Swedish or Danish. Um, anyway, there was a girl in it that said for five years she had a sexual fantasy, um, and she thought she could never do this with anyone, and she really wanted to have it as, as an experience. And then she found by an online dating app, uh, she found someone who had exactly the same wish, and they have uh, a relationship in which they have a sexual ritual, and it's the only sex they have, and it's always the same. And it's she dresses up as a schoolgirl with her hair like this. And, and some schoolgirl dresses and and a, and a book about horses, the children's book about horses. And she reads this book while he licks her pussy. And he'll lick her until she comes. And that's all the sex they have. Every time the same. 
and uh, it's super weird maybe but for for her she she found a peace that she never had uh, for many years for being able to do this weird things that actually fulfill her somehow so I believe there's many possibilities to find places for uh, for um, the qualities that you're looking for. And it can be like this. I mean, this is a specific thing and not everyone might uh, have something so specific that you want to have, but maybe there's something else that you would like to uh, to have. And it can also be in uh, in situations that you make up that, that don't happen naturally, but you, you make them. Yeah. There is a very nice, um, there is a very nice uh, concept called the wheel of consent. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's invented by a woman called Betty Martin, and there's a lot of information about it online. And uh, the main idea is that uh, basically we have in, in physical interactions or in sexual interactions, we have, um, we have tendencies if we're giving or taking and also who we who we do the things for. So let's say in classical massage, if I massage you, then it's very clear that I will massage you in a way that I think you like it. So I'm giving and I do it for you. I'm active and I do it for you. And you, if you're uh, enjoying it, hopefully, <laughs> then you will be uh, doing nothing. So you're passive. And it's for you, and you know that it's for you. And uh, then there, this is like kind of the classical thing that 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 we all know. So we're serving, and someone else is receiving the gift. And then there can be the other way around, uh, that uh, I'm doing something, and it's for me. For example, the way I will probably touch. Um, if I go to the store to buy a new carpet and I will touch it to see if it's scratchy or not, the way I touch the carpet is not for the carpet. So I don't touch it in a way that I believe the carpet will like it, but I touch it for my for my skin, for my own sensations. I'll do it in a way, how, how do I like it? And this can also happen in a sexual interaction. I can touch you in a way that I like to touch it. Mm, this ass feels nice. Okay, how do I want to touch this ass? Oh, I want to grab. Uh, or I don't know, I want to I want to be so soft and so slow because there's this very, very little hair that don't, is not even visible. I can all, only feel it when I go like this. And I love to feel this hair. So I will just like play with this hair. So this can be like, I do this, but it's for me. So it's a taking. Um, and uh, the other person, if, if this is your hair that I'm like exploring, oh, it's so nice, then you're allowing, you're, you're offering your body to me to do this if we, if we are in consent. <laughs> so what happens a lot is that people uh, mix up these things. So what can happen is, um, I don't know, my partner licking me and I think he likes licking, so I'll let him lick, but I don't like it right now. So I'll act like, oh, this is nice to give him this gift. But actually, he's trying his best to do the best for me. So I'm like kind of, we're both thinking that the other one is receiving the gift. No one is receiving the gift. Both are trying to help the other out to have a nice time. And in the end, it's a kind of a bit frustrating 10 minutes because both really notice the other one isn't really actually enjoying it as much as we hoped. But yeah, okay, we'll just continue to the next step <laughs> in the script. So um, yeah, maybe you've had situations like that. And, and uh, the interesting thing is that if we are a bit more clear and we take the role, it can be just much more satisfying. Like no one wants to kind of massage someone and they don't like it, but they don't say it. Like, and then the end are like, yeah, did you, did you like it? Yeah, yeah, thank you. And then they go like, <clears throat> <laughs> you go like, oh fuck. <laughs> um, so, uh, I really like this consent work and what I think is in it, um, um, a lot of people have taboos in themselves for one of these four roles. So for example, a lot of people don't dare to take. They think it's bad if I do something for me. So if I, if I touch your ass in the way I like to touch your ass, this is wrong. And what results is that you can't ever do anything that is nice for you. You'll have to hope that someone else does it. And, and uh, 
yeah for example i was in a i was in a class and i had an exercise with a woman with huge breasts she was a singer and she had this enormous huge tits and i was like okay the exercise is i can do th something i want to do so i i like okay i need to i need to be courageous i really want it so i, I asked her can i can i please touch your breasts would you would you enjoy it is it okay and she's like yeah please i'd love it so I had this great pleasure of being allowed to like bath in her breasts and I could like, put my head and my hands and uh, the way I touched her was for my pleasure, but she enjoyed it. She loved it. So what we're mixing up often is, uh, is the other one okay with it? If I believe it's wrong to touch someone's ass the way I want to touch them, then I do believe it's wrong because I believe they don't want it. But if they say, yeah, of course, go ahead. Here's my ass. I'll, I'll make it naked for you <laughs> so you can really feel it well. Why not? Like, why not go for it? And I think it's a very helpful thing to, to look into this wheel of consent things. So if you haven't heard about it, I really rec rec recommend you look a video on it. There's many good things on YouTube. You can just type in wheel of consent. And find out for yourself what is easy for you which role and which is not and what do you maybe lose by not allowing you this role like what do you lose by not um taking or by not um receiving the gift like if you're always uh if you always feel sorry if someone massages you you can never have a nice massage like if you always be like oh, oh i need to help you more hopefully i did five massages for you first so i really really made up my you know like leveled my pay i don't know the, the words i'm lacking words so so if we're always trying to keep the balance in a way that we did more and we worked more so we deserved it hopefully then it, there can never be this relaxation of yes i will allow you to give and and probably you know this thing of you, you really would love to help this person out and they just don't accept it it's so frustrating so it can be it can be so nice to to give someone something and to be in the serving role but if they don't accept the serving and they don't want to be served yeah then it's like kind of i don't know frustrating and so it's also a pleasure that you don't fulfill if you don't accept a, a service that is offered to you. If someone offers you to do your, a, 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 a favor, a physical favor maybe, why not, why not take it? Because probably they get a pleasure from it, from doing this. So this is a bit what I mean by personal taboos. I would like to enter now a little bit more into this direction of personal taboos. Like what are your things that you have a belief about? Uh, I can't do this or I shouldn't. I shouldn't do this. This is naughty. People shouldn't do this. Um, I think I'd like to give you a, a few moments to just uh, think a bit about uh, beliefs that you may, may carry with you, beliefs that you think is, are limiting to you uh, around sexuality. Maybe you have, um, I, I, for a long time, I had the belief I can't touch myself when I'm alone. I don't know why I had it, but I, I was like, I just thought it's just, just not nice to do it. And like, I, I can only touch myself with someone and not alone. Or also like, um, I, I, I smell bad. I had this belief, I smell bad, I taste bad, I can't have someone touch uh, or taste or lick or anything, my, my private areas. Uh, so yeah, maybe you want to write some down or just have a thought. And if you feel comfortable with it, I'd love you also to share a few, but you don't have to, or you don't have to share it. How can a couple who have been together for so long in a sexless way can reignite sexual desire? Ooh. Mm -hmm. so uh what i would love you to do is really find a few sentences that kind of in a short way describe what you found out for example someone says if i'm not happy with something when i can bring it up when can when can i bring it up to not bruise his ego so this says i cannot I cannot uh, speak for myself. I cannot speak up for myself. This would be maybe 
might be a short version of this, yeah? Or here, for a long time, I thought I have to please the woman and neglected my own desires. I cannot have pleasure. I, I must not enjoy. I can't enjoy. It's not allowed to enjoy. I need to please. I need to be, I should be available. So, so maybe you can kind of make it short and clear. What, what would be this sentence that is kind of describing a taboo that you created in yourself? And uh, thank you for your question, Flo. Uh, I saw it uh, right right now. I will I will back, get back to it later because right now this is a bit off topic. Mm -hmm. I can't give a blowjob. Yes, my fear of rejection has hindered me from actively exploring my own pleasure. I can't be too sexual. Yeah, strong one. Sex is just bad. Just generally, sex is bad. A lot of people carry that one. I cannot be as vulnerable as I want to be unless the other opened before opened up beforehand. Yes, okay. Um, you may have some more things coming up. This is like kind of a thinking work that will probably follow uh, and, and have some more thoughts popping up in the next uh, minutes and hours and days. Um, what I would love to do is give you a little breakout room session. I don't know if you've ever done that now with. Uh, with COVID, many people have experience with Zoom. So it means that I'll just suddenly uh, put you into a, a, a group of two and you don't know who is, who is coming and uh, you can have a small exchange with, with this person. It's a bit weird because you have never talked to anyone in the group and you don't know who's coming into the, in, into the room, um, but it allows you to have a little bit more of contact. And the way I suggest you do it is that you just, you'll be, um, popping up or like someone will pop up in front of your screen uh, yeah in front of your screen on your screen um and you you'll have um a small share of three minutes each of whatever comes up and you don't have to share about the things that you just found out about yourself you can but you can also just uh say okay i'll go first and then you see what comes you can just well this talk for me has been like interesting to hear this or, or this this thing I'm, I'm wondering about it or maybe you don't have much to say uh, because you find it strange to talk to a stranger out of nowhere uh, about this topic but I suggest you try it and you just see um, how it is and you listen to them and then you talk uh, and maybe it's a small weird conversation maybe it opens up something or maybe you can also share like uh, really what what actually you think about most of this thing or what shocked you most or what are like oh my god yeah I actually have this I don't I hope no one will ever find out you you're welcome to try to tell this you'll probably never see this person again so um so um, many people stayed until the final second so probably had some interesting talks anything you want to share with everyone maybe you want to comment on how this was or how you feel um, ich könnte was sagen, ah, but in English, right? Yes. I don't feel comfortable to talk in English. I forgot about it. Um, but in um, very quickly, it felt uh, confusing good to have this talk and to actually uh, just talk as freely as we did. And to, I don't know, just talk about sex and our thoughts, uh, which uh, came up especially with a stranger. It was really, I really enjoyed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I agree with him, but I was in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was just our case. <laughs> okay, so you had a great talk. <laughs> Please think of one sentence that is a limiting belief that you found out now, like you had a lot of different ideas and there's something in, and something that you think that could be actually good for you, but you have it as a personal taboo. So something like I shouldn't moan loud, but actually you want to do it or you think that it could be good for you to do it. So think of one sentence like I have to I shouldn't uh, receive pleasure, but you actually want to receive pleasure, but you somehow believe you, you shouldn't receive it. It's like you, you notice that you 
think that, or I shouldn't give blowjobs. I shouldn't have many partners. I shouldn't have sex too much. I shouldn't masturbate. I I am fat. I don't know anything that that that's kind of like something that's not helpful for you, but you believe it. Find one sentence. If you're courageous, you can write it to us. You can also just say it, uh, think it for yourself. And now if you have this sentence, can you, can you give a wave or something? If you have a, a one sentence, can you just one small thing? You can still repeat this thing alone. Hopefully, uh, more or less everyone has a sentence. So please now find a, a sentence that is like the answer to it, the positive answer, the, the counterpart. So it could be if my sentence is I'm fat, my, my positive sentence could be I'm okay the way I look or I'm sexy. Or if it's like I shouldn't receive pleasure, then the answer could be my right is to receive pleasure or anything that is a positive sentence for you that is the answer to this negative sentence or women are allowed to orgasm, or I'm, I'm worthy to receive. I can give blowjobs, fuck hell, I can give blowjobs, whatever, anything that can be like, a, yes, I'm, yeah. Anything that you find an, a nice uh, empowering sentence. And also here, you can share it in the chat if you're courageous, or you can just no, write it down for yourself. And yeah, I invite you to really write it down. And I think if you share it, it will probably be also empowering for anyone else reading it. So please also consider sharing it to the others as something that we want to believe, that we want to hear, and that we want to see in the world. Yes, we want to allow, I can be sexually free. Uh, yeah, anything that, that can be empowering or nice for people to hear. Maybe you also can imagine how you say this to other people that feel like you that know these feelings and you want to say them, no, you can do this. Yes, come on. Or you don't have to do it. You're, you're, you're allowed to say no. You're allowed to say no. Can be nice. So no sharings yet. Everyone is a bit shy. <laughs> I can ask my partner to do something I like and not be ashamed or afraid. She just likes it. Yes. I'm eternally youthful and sexy. I can receive my partner's wishes without feeling abused. Women who initiate sex are confident and attractive. Yes. I can approach sex playfully. I can share my sexual fantasies with my partner. Yes. I can have secret sexual fantasies. I'm allowed to enjoy sex. You can also direct message to me so no one knows that it's your sentence and I can read it out. And the last thing that I invite you to do is to open Google Maps and find a, a tattoo studio and make an appointment so you can tattoo this sentence onto your arm so that you can read it every day. <laughs> <laughs> or you can also tattoo it onto a paper and just put this paper on your wall or on your mirror or anywhere else you would like to see it um just find ways to make to to encourage positive beliefs in you it can be a bit of kind of stupid seeming thing but it's nice to read on your on your i don't know in, in your notebook in your in your cell phone as a screensaver or whatever to to just read hey you, you you can you're allowed and you can also use a code if you don't want others to understand what this means you can make it short or you can just yes you can just write yes and you know this yes means yes i can be slutty or i can be dirty or anything that you find nice and find some some little way to to put a reminder for yourself anywhere uh, on in your flat in your room in your books whatever anywhere so you can remind yourself that you want to change your attitudes to a certain about a certain thing that is blocking you and uh you can also i mean this was a bit short and quick now and we are like in a kind of anonymous circle there's not so much exchange so maybe you want to do it also alone and, and continue thinking on the negative beliefs that you found 
and see how you can give yourself a positive thing that 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 answers to it that says no i can i can do it or yeah i don't have to do it or anything that that gives you a feeling of freedom so i think we're reaching the end now <laughs> I wanted to end on time, so now it's exactly eight, just in case anyone uh, has planned for it to end at eight, I'll end at eight, even though there's a few things that I didn't mention, but yeah. Um, we have a bit more time on the Zoom, so if you want to stay for for questions, for sharing, stay on and listen or ask something, we'll see. Or you can uh, go off in a moment. And for the end, uh, what is there to say that my my uh, there has already been shared, but maybe you can share it again. My um, PayPal things there, uh, the the my data for uh, donating me money. So if you want to uh, um, appreciate my work and and give me some money, you're welcome to do that. <laughs> If you don't have money, you, you're not uh, supposed to give me any because then you don't have it. But if you do, uh, I, I love it, of course. I mean, I, I, I live from work like this. I love it. And uh, I'm very happy to, to have done it. I would also have done it for free. But of course, it's great um, to have any possibility to earn some money in the, different, in the difficult Corona times. So feel free to donate if you want. And thank you for having joined i hope this was somehow helpful and i mean this touches on shadow shit like there's really some stuff that that can be heavy around taboo of course and there's good reasons for it and if you feel like there's something like oh i don't really know i don't want to think about rape things or dirty whatever that's there's like there is dark areas in this and and it's okay if if something gets stirred up and you don't have to go there you don't have to look at these things uh, and i I believe that if you do look there, it gets less scary. So if you take a look, what's happening there? Oh, what am I scared of? Then it gets a bit less, uh, I don't know, like um, endangering you. So often the unknown is more scary than if I just know, oh, actually, I, I just don't want this. Okay, and now I can I can think of something else. So, so if you're still like struggling, you can always come back to me or I'll stay here and still share something or don't take it home with you. I mean, you're already home, so don't don't take take it out of the computer with you and and suffer alone at home. But you can still share here now. Um, yeah, and maybe you want to think of something nice to do right now after the Zoom because I I hate this moment when a Zoom ends and I click leave the room and then it's like, uh, I don't know something weird. So it can be nice to just plan now something nice you want to do right now special drink or just go to pee or just like stretch so so you can have a nice ending for yourself thank you thank you so much lisa i think everyone already shared how thankful they are and um, this was really interesting really great um follow lisa on facebook it's all in the chat she does some amazing courses workshops events um if you are interested also in more i think it's okay to say that so uh, she announces stuff on facebook and um Thank you everyone for coming, for attending. Also check out our website, social media. There's a new event coming up in April about Cardano and cryptocurrency, if you're interested in that topic. Um, and of course, many more to come, sign up for yoga. And yeah, we will hang out a little more here. If you want to stay in a smaller group, ask some questions, that's fine too. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. I think people are already leaving. Um, Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. This was great. Yay. <laughs>